Hi everybody, I'm Jay Leno. I'm standing here in my garage because I want to say congratulations to the League of Women Voters on your 100th anniversary. I've chosen this spot because behind me is an ad from the Ladies Home Journal, June of 1920, for the Ford Model T. And it's significant because it's one of the first automobile ads aimed at women. I thought this would be a good place to start because it all takes place just about the same time. That was a huge turning point for women. Women driving cars, women voting, women getting out of the house. And, you know, democracy is hard work. It's one of those things we have to be really diligent because if you don't use it, you can lose it. You know, when I was hosting The Tonight Show, on the 75th anniversary of this organization, we went out, we did one of our jaywalking statements, you know, where we talk to people on the street and ask them questions. And we asked people, when did women get the right to vote? You know, the most common answer, 1966. And I go, what? <laughs> but, but I think they were confused with the Civil Rights Act of 1964. And then the most shocking part is, I would say to people, do you vote? And half would go, no, nah, not really. And I went, oh my God, you know, this is one of those things we have to keep on top of. And this is what you folks do a terrific job of doing. You know, one has only to look at Afghanistan. In 1996, 51% of the professionals in Afghanistan were women, doctors, lawyers, accountants, civil servants. Yet with the Taliban, within one generation, it was illegal to teach women how to read. So if you don't think you can lose it, don't vote and then see what happens. Thank you for all you do. God bless you folks. Hi, I'm Judy Woodruff with the PBS NewsHour here to congratulate the League of Women Voters on a remarkable century of activism and achievement, fighting for women to have not only the right to vote, but the ability to participate at the highest levels in our democracy. Thank you for your tireless commitment to women and to ensuring they have a seat at the table as decisions are made that affect all of us. Here is to your next 100. Hello, League of Women Voters. It is an honor to join millions of voters across America, women and men, to say thank you for a century, a century of service to our country. In 1920, the 19th Amendment was ratified and white women got the right to vote. It should have been all women and all of them should have been earlier, but it took decades longer for women of color to win that right. That's the democratic struggle in a nutshell. We fall short, we do better, we protect the gains we've made, and we're always fighting to build a democracy that reflects the full diversity of America. I'm so grateful to the League of Women Voters for your work to register voters, educate voters, and fight attempts to suppress the vote, which go against everything our democracy stands for. When I cast my vote this fall, I will think of the generations of women who fought and marched so that I and millions of others can do the simple, beautiful thing that helped shape the future of this country we all love. Thank you. Hello everyone, this is U.S. Senator Gary Peters, and I want to congratulate the League of Women Voters on their 100th anniversary. The ratification of the 19th Amendment finally gave women the right to vote. And as we celebrate this achievement, there's no question there's more to be done. The role of the League in educating our citizens on the importance of civics, voting, and getting out the vote has never been more vital. You are helping ensure that everyone participates, and that's one of the core tenets of our democracy. It's thanks to you that uh, I know we will carry the torch of democracy to the next generation, including to my two daughters, and to all of our children, just as past members of the League have done. Thank you for all you do, and again, congratulations on this important milestone. Hi everybody, I'm Congressman Dean Phillips, and I'm here to extend my heartfelt greetings to you as you celebrate the 100th anniversary of women's suffrage and the League of Women Voters. I'm so grateful for the League's steadfast commitment to empowering voters and defending our democracy. The significance of your efforts to encourage education and advocacy with the goal of increasing civic engagement and voter participation in communities across the United States can't be overstated. My mother, Dee Dee, is a tireless voice for equality from whom I draw inspiration and great strength. 
As a member of Congress, I honor her every day as an advocate for women's health, economic security, economic freedom, and equal rights. Last year, I joined my sisters in Congress in a sea of suffragist white at the State of the Union address. As the only male member of Congress to wear a white jacket, it was my privilege to honor the extraordinary women of the 116th Congress, my mother, the suffragists whose tireless work afforded my great-grandmothers, Sarah Johnson and Rose Phillips, the right to vote in 1920. The League of Women Voters plays an integral role in our communities and for our nation, and I'm grateful. I promise to continue to be a partner in your work and to defend our democracy together. Remember that optimism is just as contagious as fear, and keep the faith. Thanks, everybody. Good evening, I'm Don Beyer. I'm your member of Congress from Northern Virginia's 8th District. I just want to wish the League of Women Voters a very happy 100th anniversary, and also to commemorate the 100th anniversary commemoration of the ratification of the 19th Amendment. My grandmother, Clara Beyer, was a big suffragist, and through her long and wonderful life, she was close friends with Eleanor Roosevelt, with Frances Perkins, and those three women have always been held up to me as the ideal for strong women in public life, women who earned slowly the right to vote. And now, of course, I get to work with the strongest woman, Speaker Nancy Pelosi, who I adore and who provides very strong leadership for America each and every day. America is stronger when women vote. America is stronger when women lead. Thank you. On behalf of all who value a vibrant democracy, happy birthday, League of Women Voters. I'm Congresswoman Anna Eshoo from Silicon Valley, California, and I'm delighted to celebrate this milestone with you. From its beginnings in the suffrage movement, the League pressed for progress, from federal aid for maternal and child care programs, to social security, to advocacy for a United Nations, and passage of the Equal Rights Amendment. But it's your belief in the power of the ballot and your insistence on sound information that has made the name League of Women Voters synonymous with excellence. You pioneered broadcasts of Meet the Candidates and revived presidential debates, but it's your thorough research, sound facts, and pinpoint accuracy that make you the trusted resource for American voters. Your disciplined, specific rendering of the pros and cons of an issue set the gold standard for those in search of an unbiased source. Today, when confidence in public institutions is so low, it should be a cause for great pride that citizens have relied on you for 100 years and still do. Thank you for your extraordinary public service. Happy birthday, League of Women Voters. Hello and congratulations to the League of Women Voters on your 100th anniversary. I want to say thank you for your work lifting up the voices of women across America. As we mark the centennial of the 19th Amendment, guaranteeing women the right to vote, we need your leadership now more than ever. We can't forget that women were not given the right to vote. Women across our country had to fight for it. And we know it wasn't easy. The women's suffrage movement encountered strong opposition every step of the way. The National Association Opposed to Women's Suffrage, yes, there was such a thing, even published a piece of propaganda warning that if women were granted the right to vote, some states would be under, quote, petticoat rule. Well, 100 years later, I think we can safely say that this fear did not come to pass. In fact, states and countries where women are in charge around the world, I think they're doing pretty well. I think a lot of women leaders are more than exceeding the expectations on them. But even today, our democracy is still under threat from those seeking to enact barriers to voting and to deny, deny Americans their constitutional right to vote. And organizations like the League of Women Voters are on the front lines protecting our democracy, working to ensure that everyone has a voice, that everyone can participate, and that our elected officials truly reflect the country they represent. As a new generation of marker, marchers are out there fighting for justice, we have to make sure that they can also vote. 
That's why I'm working with the league and organizations around the country to lead legislation to make sure that this vote in November is fair, that people can vote, that they can vote from home if that's the face, safest way to do it, that we allow people to have their voices heard, just like those suffragists fought for 100 years ago. Since your founding, you've helped inspire generations of strong women leaders who blazed a trail, passed a torch along, and kept it up for the next generation. So thank you, congratulations, and keep up the good work. We need you now more than ever. Thank you. This year, we celebrate 100 years of the founding of the League of Women Voters, and also the ratification of the 19th Amendment which gives women the right to vote. I'm grateful for the tireless efforts of the League of Women Voters the past century, and I hope they do the same a hundred years to come. Hi, I'm Arkansas Senator John Bozeman. Congratulations to the League of Women Voters on 100 years of empowering voters and encouraging Americans to make their voices heard at the ballot box. As we commemorate the centennial anniversary of the ratification of the 19th Amendment, it's a good time to reflect on the importance of exercising this right. America is stronger when we take the opportunity to participate in the process that allows us to decide who represents us and what policies we want enacted in order to secure a brighter future. We all have ideas of what needs to be done to help our country succeed. Those ideas may not always align but one thing is true, we want to leave the next generation of Americans a better country. We can all be very proud that we have the right and ability to do this in the voting booth. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, my name is Tom Emmer and I represent Minnesota's sixth congressional district in Congress. To all of you outstanding women in virtual attendance at the League of Women Voters Biennial Convention, welcome and thank you for allowing me to join you today. I want to give a special thank you to the League of Women Voters CEO, Virginia Case, for all her hard work promoting and encouraging participation in our democracy. This year, we celebrate the centennial of the ratification of the 19th Amendment and the founding of the League of Women Voters. These two events go hand in hand. Without one, we would not have the other. Since 1920, the League of Women Voters has taken the initiative to educate and empower women with the information necessary to understand their rights to, and to encourage civic engagement. Thank you for your hard work and commitment to furthering that goal and ensuring everyone has a voice in our process. Thank you for doing your part to get us toward a more perfect democracy. And congratulations on 100 years of incredible work. Thank you. Hello, I'm Congressman Stephen Horsford of Nevada's 4th Congressional District. As a member of Congress, I have worked to help uplift women across the country, and I've seen how your organization, the League of Women Voters, does the same. Women have smashed the glass ceiling time and time again, and have proven how crucial women voters are to protecting our democracy. I want to thank you and congratulate you at the League of Women Voters on this, both your 100th anniversary and the 100th anniversary of the ratification of the 19th Amendment, which granted women across the country the right to vote. For more than 100 years, you at the League of Women Voters have worked as a nonpartisan activist grassroots organization working to preserve the rights of voters and encourage participation in our democracy. Now, we can look to your next 100 years, and I'm looking forward to seeing all that your organization will continue to accomplish. Thank you for all that you do, and congratulations on your 100th year. Congratulations to the League of Women Voters, 100 years. You know, it's not surprising that the same year that we were able to ratify as a country, the 19th Amendment, giving all of us the right to vote, that we would see the League of Women Voters formed. You have played such a critical role in making sure that women are educated, making sure that we have equal access to the ballot box, which is still 
as you know, a tremendous issue. And thank you for your current leadership on this. In so many ways, defending, protecting our democracy and every single American's right to vote is at the heart and soul of what you have done. So thank you, thank you, thank you, and happy anniversary. Hi, I'm Senator Tammy Baldwin, and I wanna congratulate the League of Women Voters on 100 strong years of public policy advocacy. Your work is so important during this challenging time, and I'm grateful for your partnership as we continue fighting to expand voting rights in our nation. We are also celebrating 100 years of another important milestone for women in America, the passage and ratification of the 19th Amendment. A century ago, after decades of struggle by courageous women and men, our nation finally extended to women the most fundamental right in our democracy, the right to vote. We still have much work to do and more glass ceilings to break, but it's important to celebrate this monumental anniversary and the progress that women have made in the last century. Thank you for all you do to make our country a better place. Hello, I'm Congresswoman Lucille Royball Allard of California's 40th Congressional District. It is my great pleasure to congratulate the League of Women Voters on its 100th anniversary and to join them in celebrating the 100th anniversary of the ratification of our U.S. Constitution's 19th Amendment, which gave women the right to vote. I also applaud the League for its unwavering commitment to providing informed and active citizen participation in our government and elections. I'm particularly appreciative of the work the staff is doing in my congressional district. Over the years, they have presented my constituents with unbiased, nonpartisan information about the voting process, elections, and the importance and value of every eligible voter exercising their right to vote. Thank you, League of Women Voters, for your 100 years of commitment to ensuring our communities play a critical role in creating a more perfect union. Hello, League of Women Voters. I'm Congressman Adam Schiff, and I am proud to represent California's 28th Congressional District. Thank you for inviting me to join you tonight, albeit virtually, to celebrate this momentous occasion. I want to extend my deepest congratulations on the League's 100th anniversary. This year also marks the historic 100th anniversary of the passage of the 19th Amendment. From the early beginnings of the suffragist movement, black and white suffragettes worked side by side towards voting rights. But ultimately, the 19th Amendment only guaranteed white women the right to vote. For black women, the uphill road to suffrage continued. As millions of Americans took to the streets this month to demand racial justice, it's clear that the work continues to ensure America lives up to its promise. That's why we need all of you to volunteer and work with League of Women Voters to stay in this fight. From registering voters to providing civics education lessons, you play a critical role in American democracy. As we near one of the most consequential elections since our country's founding, I am grateful for organizations like the League of Women Voters that empower women, defend our democracy, and keep our civil society moving forward, even in the most difficult of times. Thank you all for your service to your communities and to the entire country. I look forward to many more years of meaningful action from the League towards creating a more perfect union. Congratulations. Hey everybody, Colin Allred here from North Texas. You know, the right to vote is sacred. It's a fight that we have had since our very beginning to make sure that every voice in our country is heard. But the women's suffrage movement moved us a giant step closer to that goal 100 years ago. Through protesting, organizing, and just pure grit, it led to the passage of the 19th Amendment and the expansion of the right to vote to women in the United States. You know, that's how it's done. Every major change we've achieved in our country has been because of ordinary folks coming together to do extraordinary things because they believe in our country and they know that we can be better. As a voting rights attorney, I know that the efforts to suppress the vote in our country are still very much ongoing. 
Unfortunately, we've seen that recently with some of the elections in Georgia and other states as we deal with the pandemic and COVID-19. And we know that the fights ahead of us are going to be tough. But I know that by working together, we will be able to overcome it and make sure that every single one of our fellow citizens is able to express themselves through our democracy. And that's why I want to thank the League of Women Voters for not only doing the work that you do, but for always standing up and being on the front lines and being on the right side of history and trying to expand access to the ballot and trying to make sure that our fellow Americans have a chance to express themselves. Thank you for the work that you do. You're going to make us a better country than you already have with the work you're doing. Thanks again. This is Congressman Henry Cuella. Congratulations on the 100th anniversary of the founding of the League of Women Voters and the ratification of the 19th Amendment. I want to thank all of you for your dedication and tireless contributions to protecting the most fundamental, the most powerful right of every American citizen, the right to vote. From the founding of the eve of the 19th Amendment ratification, the League of Women Voters has been on the front line of our nation's fight to expand the right and the access to vote in order to create a more perfect democracy. Despite the decades that have passed, the progress has been achieved. Your mission has never been more important. This election year, we had more than six hour lines to vote and hundreds of voting locations closed. This is not right. Voting is a constitutional right of every citizen. We all have an obligation to ensure the integrity of our voting process. Again, congratulations. Continue doing the vital work that makes our nation truly exceptional. Thank you, and God bless America. Hello, League of Women Voters. Derek Kilmer here, representative from Washington's 6th Congressional District. And I want to take a moment to say congratulations on your 100th anniversary and to say thank you. The work that you all do in my region and across the country is absolutely critical to ensuring that we have a federal government for and by the people, a true representative government. A hundred years ago, our nation ratified the 19th Amendment to finally give American women the right to vote. It was a major victory for equality, but today, in 2020, especially in these times, we know that there is still so much more work to do to ensure liberty and justice for all. I want you to know that I stand arm in arm with you in our battle for progress, to build a better nation, to keep people informed and engaged so our government works for them, and to ensure all Americans have the right to vote. So again, thank you for all that you do. Keep up the incredible work and count me as a partner. Hi, I'm Senator Jack Reed of Rhode Island, and congratulations to the League of Women Voters on your 100th anniversary. You have led the way in terms of providing civic responsibility and civic leadership. A hundred years ago, we ratified the Voting Rights Act for women. And the best way to celebrate not only your hundredth anniversary, but the hundredth anniversary of voting for women is to make the 2020 election one in which all eligible voters go out and cast their vote. And I know the league will be leading that effort. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much for allowing me to participate in the celebration of your 100th year of existence to be found in the same year uh, that the 19th Amendment was ratified is something that should give you some sense of pride. I know just thinking about it uh, makes me know how important you are uh, to the future growth and development of this great nation of ours. I always quote Alexis de Tocqueville when I talk about this country's weakness, not because we are more enlightened than any other country, but rather because we have always been able to repair our faults. Recent events have revealed a lot of faults that need to be repaired. I would hope that by the time you celebrate your 101st, we will have started on the road to repair the significant faults that are now found in our healthcare delivery system, our educational system, and yes, our judicial system. Congratulations, good luck, and Godspeed. Hello, League of Women Voters. I'm Congress Member Nanette Diaz Baragan. I want to thank each of you for your critical role in voting rights and fair elections. 
As a daughter of immigrants and a citizen myself, I never took voting for granted and viewed it as a responsibility, a duty, and a privilege. The right to vote is fundamental to our democracy. It's a right that we must continue to constantly defend. 100 years ago, with the leadership of the League of Women Voters, women gained the right to vote. It was a huge accomplishment and moved the country toward a more representative democracy. Yet, even after the passage of the 19th Amendment, too many in this country continue to be denied this constitutional right, especially people of color. In celebrating the 100 year anniversary of the 19th Amendment, we must recommit to the spirit of the original fight and demand that the Voting Rights Act be fully restored and enhanced, ensure that every vote can be cast and counted and that rights of all citizens of the United States shall not be abridged. Hello, I'm Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence representing Michigan's 14th Congressional District. 2020 marks both the 100th anniversary of the ratification of the 19th Amendment and the founding of the League of Women Voters. As co-chair of both the Congressional Caucus on Women's Issues and Democratic Women's Caucus, I proudly recognize the League of Women Voters for 100 years of service and leadership. The women's rights movement was full of fighters who refused to be treated as second-class citizens. But still today, 100 years after women received the right to vote, our battle continues. We stand at a time when women still need more protections, more opportunities, and more representation. While we acknowledge the hard work of our suffrage sisters, the purple ribbon signifies Black and Native American women who were in the fight, but still had not been granted the right to vote until years later. The road, the road to equality, ladies, it is not done. And the women of the 116th Congress are standing with you ready to fight. We have accomplished so much. We have so much to be proud of, but our work is not done because the little girls who are looking at us and looking for us for leadership are depending on us and we will get the job done. God bless you and congratulations. Hi, this is Congresswoman Lucy McBath and I represent Georgia's sixth district. I wanted to take this time to congratulate the League of Women Voters on the 100th anniversary of its founding. In 1920, the ratification of the 19th Amendment gave women the right to vote in America. And since that time, millions of women have stood up to make their voices heard. The right to vote in this country is among its most precious freedoms, and we must continue our fight to make voting easier and more accessible for all eligible Americans. Thank you again for all of your work and congratulations on this historic milestone. Hi, it's Congressman Jamie Raskin from Maryland's 8th District wishing uh, all best greetings to my friends at the National League of Women Voters Conference. It's the 100th birthday of the 19th Amendment. It's the 100th birthday of the League of Women Voters, which is our great institutional legacy of the 19th Amendment, granting uh, women, more than half the population, the right to vote. We have so many great heroes to recognize uh, from that uh, magnificent struggle, including Emma Gillette and Ellen Spencer Mussey, who are suffrage activists and also the founders of American University's Washington College of Law, where I taught for more than a quarter of a century, the first law school in America, the first law school on earth created and founded by women. Um, and also Alice Paul, who is a graduate of American University, Washington College of Law, uh, and as a student got involved in women's suffrage and of course uh, went on be to become one of the key leaders. But we recognize all of these great heroes and sheroes from our past. And I look forward to working with you on uh, struggles of the future and the present, including abolishing gerrymandering, moving to independent redistricting commissions uh, across the country, uh, getting rid of the antiquated and obsolete electoral college so we have a national popular vote for president, and all of the reforms we need to stop 
voter suppression, voter repression, and voter depression in 2020. The League of Women Voters is absolutely indispensable, and I'm proud to be your ally, and if I paid my dues recently, also one of your members. Happy birthday. Hi, I'm Congresswoman Terry Sewell of Alabama's 7th Congressional District. I wanna thank all of the members of the League of Women Voters for your incredible support for the past 100 years. A lot of time, women's issues are deemed half as important since we only make up half of our population. But women's issues are not just about women. It's about equality and justice for all Americans and progress for our families. When women do well, we uplift ourselves, our families, and our communities. As Barack Obama said, when women succeed, America succeeds. Yet the reality is that millions of American women still face inequity under the law and injustice in their careers and lives. Without the full equality under the Constitution, women face a devastating wage gap. And this has impact not only on our families, but on our pensions and our retirements into the future, which directly impact the health of our economy. Put plain and simple, when women succeed, we all succeed. Now this year marks the centennial of women having the right to vote, but it is still a shameful reality that the Equal Rights Amendment has not been enshrined in the United States Constitution. The removal of the ratification deadline would take a critical step towards ensuring that ERA becomes the 28th Amendment to the United States Constitution. So even though the House of Representatives passed it earlier this year, we have much work to do and have to continue to make the extension into law. I know that we have a fantastic partner in the League of Women Voters in getting the ERA across the finish line. So thank you again for all that you do to uplift women and to leveling the playing field for all. Here's to another 100 fantastic years. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to celebrate the adoption of the 19th Amendment 100 years ago. And here's why I want to tell you, so I'm pro so proud to take a part in this celebration. It's because my mother, Mrs. Ruth Grassley, was one of the first four women in the United States of America to cast a vote the day after the Secretary of State of Iowa said it had been adopted by the last of the 34 states that had to approve of it. So thank you for your celebration, and we honor these suffragettes who uh, carried this battle for more than 50 years to get the 19th Amendment adopted. Three, two, one. It's been 100 years since the 19th Amendment to the Constitution was passed, providing the right, the constitutional right, for women to vote here in the United States. You've made a heck of a difference, not just before then in making sure that that passed, but since then in terms of the quality of life here in America. Your ability to influence and to advise and to share and to make decisions for our country has made this country the place that it is today. Sometimes we forget that it's not just the moms and the grandmas and the folks that provide everybody with great advice and that are the decision makers and the caregivers, but it's those women who also step forward and who help to make the decisions and get actively involved in this country's decision-making processes. This is at all levels of government, whether it's the school board, county commission, the cities, state legislatures, governors, or in the Congress of the United States, at all levels, women have clearly had a marvelous success in providing leadership. Congratulations.